Sculpture Placement Group is primarily a research organisation. Our work impacts the visual arts. Our projects promote sustainability and pilot economic models to support artists. Floating Head is a 26-tonne floating artwork that was originally commissioned for Glasgow Garden Festival in 1988. It was conceived by Richard Groom, who made it alongside shipbuilders at the Govan Docks on the banks of the Clyde. It's made of a steel mesh and covered with a cement render. The sculpture bonds Glasgow's industrial history and materials with the process of art making. Over five months from 26th of April 1988, Glasgow Garden Festival attracted 4.3 million visitors and was part of the industrial transition that left its mark on Glasgow. The festival included 50 artworks, including a number of new commissions from Scottish artists. The festival's original site was a redevelopment of the once booming dry docks that had become symbolic of an industry in permanent decline throughout the 1980s. Fast forward to 2021, and the site is now home to BBC Scotland and Glasgow Science Centre, a complete change of architecture and industry. Early in his career, Richard Groom worked at Wallyford Stoneyard and David Lindsay Stonecarvers. He produced hand-carved ornaments and supplied carvings to many of Scotland's finest buildings, including Paisley Abbey. As an artist, he was interested in what these skills could offer to more modern sculptural propositions. Sadly, Richard passed in 2019. Inspired by the outpouring of love at the artist's funeral, Richard's brother's Andy Groom decided to seek out the sculpture. I realised at that point there was so much work that he'd done that could get lost. And a very good workmate of mine and colleague, uh, Joe, had said, you know, always remember that big, you know, head he did. Um, like, yeah, I wonder where that is. So we started Google Earth and um, looking around on Google Earth and trying to find out about, about it. Uh, and of course, with Google Maps, you can find all sorts of weird and wonderful things. But you could go around the Clyde ship lab where it was located. And I took all the phone numbers down off the gates and everything and started phoning around. And then eventually phoned this yard and said, you know, you haven't seen this thing, have you? He's like, oh yeah, big floating ahead, just down the road, yeah, we've, we've got one. What? <laughs> so, so we found it, you know, which was, you know, step one, you know. And then, of course, started speaking to the guys at Sculpture Placement Group. Our aims. Floating Head was a legacy project undertaken by SBG over the course of three years. SBG's research involves sculptures that are currently in storage, highlighting issues around ongoing commitment and care of artworks. Some key questions that emerged from this research were what should be considered ahead of a work being commissioned and how do we extend the life of a commissioned artwork? Prior to getting involved in the Floating Head project, SBG had been looking to do a project around the Glasgow Garden Festival. There was a lot of anecdotal positive nostalgia around the Garden Festival and it seemed like a good example to explore these questions about commissioning in more depth. Preparatory work in locating some of the artworks and piecing together the story began. Floating Head was brought to SBG by Glasgow City Heritage Trust. Andy Groom, responsible for the Richard Groom estate, had contacted the trust about locating the artwork and his intention to shine a light on the work of his brother. Finally, the dots were connected and a synergy between Andy and SBG drove the project forward. The project was an exciting one. It matched the group's research remit and generated more questions, like did the Garden Festival have any exemplary models that could be replicated? Did Floating Head survive by pure chance? or by the intervention of private parties. Let's look at some details of the key events during the project. Key event, ownership. After the festival, the details of where the sculpture went or exactly what happened to it is patchy. The sculpture was left on some land for storage that was bought by Ian Henderson. Then the sculpture came into his ownership. The land was being cleared and Keith, from Offshore Works Limited, operating at Clyde Boatyard, became concerned that the sculpture might be damaged and towed the sculpture into safety. Since that point, it had been sat in the dockyard as a curiosity. It bore those decades with patches of rendering, moss and some graffiti for good measure. During the process of bringing the sculpture back on display, a number of final destinations of the artwork were explored, including placing it into a museum collection. Although to a visual arts organisation or artist's estate this may seem like an ideal destination. However, for private owners of artworks, this is not always the case. They've often invested resources into its preservation and feel that it might be more secure remaining in private ownership. Conservation. The conservation of the artwork was undertaken by a small team of interested parties and experts who were keen to support the project, including Concrete Repairs Limited. The company brokered free materials and charged for labour at a discounted rate and contributed some money towards the launch event. The decisions of how to conserve the work were debated within the team, described here by Kate V. Robinson. We had a, a number of conversations between the different parties as to what extent we were going to um, 
interfere with the surface of the artwork. So most of the repairs and restoration were concentrated on below the water line, which was purely just to mean, make sure that it didn't get damaged when it was floated and that it was watertight and, you know, in order to preserve that um, floatability of the piece. Uh, but above that, um, we removed a little part of graffiti, but we decided to keep the moss and the different sort of tonal patinas. Key event fundraising. Project cost was approximately £27,000. Key funders were CITB, Glasgow City Heritage Trust, Awards for All, Sustrans and a crowd funder. The crowd funder was part of Creative Scotland's crowd match, one of 20 shortlisted creative projects in Scotland, which provided 1.5,000 in match funding. The crowd funder was successful, reaching a total of £7,000. This meant the sculpture's refloating could be realised and engage more people to feel some ownership over the project. This also helped in providing press support and a larger platform to share the project. Key event, workshop and science centre. A partnership was formed with Glasgow Science Centre to deliver workshops. The first of these took place on March 2020 at Curiosity Live, where over 300 schoolchildren made their own floating sculptures. Following Covid, we took this activity online and appointed artists Ruby and Greer Pester and boat builder Jason Bradley to lead this activity, merging boat building skills and sculptural. In the end, we delivered online workshops for Govan Hill Development Trust and Glasgow Disability Alliance, who made their own floating sculptures, which were floated in the moat surrounding Glasgow Science Centre during the launch event. Key event, display. Like most projects at this time, floating heads refloating was beset with COVID delays. Eventually, the display of the artwork was delayed by a year. In the between time, SBG ran a virtual experience of the sculpture with Glasgow Doors Open Day, creating a video that shared the story so far and people's experiences of the sculpture. This provided SBG with another opportunity to spread our message about Floating Head to a new audience. When the time came to refloat the head, coordinating with those responsible for what parts of the land and water that the artwork was going to be moored was challenging. The long-term liability and the maintenance of the artwork couldn't be resolved, so a shorter-term commitment was brokered. In August 2021, Floating Head was finally returned to the Clyde. An official launch event was planned for later in September, but the towing itself became an occasion. It was viewed by TV and radio crews, friends and family of Richards, and many interested bystanders. The press coverage was overwhelmingly positive, featuring on the front page of many newspapers. The launch event took place during Doors Open Day in September 2021, with speeches, music and a ribbon-cutting moment for Richard Groom's mother. It was a very emotional moment of celebration for Richard Groom's estate, and the conservation team acknowledging what a massive undertaking achievement the project was. The temporary display was mainly due to the COP26 event, which meant a heightened risk around the area and another stakeholder that was responsible for the management of the installation site. In order to have an offer for the COP26 audience, Floating Head's display period was accompanied by a sculpture tour that was developed with funding from Awards for All. Named the Govan Sculpture Trail, the tour placed other artworks that were in storage by contemporary artists in Glasgow into public spaces, taking viewers on a guided art tour around the Govan area. A virtual tour was developed with an online guide developed by Annalise O'Connell, funded by the Robertson Trust Internship Programme. The research combined historical artefacts alongside the newer pieces, providing some cultural context for the tour and appealing to heritage audiences. One of the locations of the tour was Govan Cross Shopping Mall. The artwork installed there was horse by Esther Gamsu. The response to the artwork was overwhelmingly positive, with unit owners offering suggestions of making a competition to name the horse and to keep it permanently. This part of the project also engaged other creative communities in the Govan area, forging closer ties with Govan Project Space specifically, a group that SBG collaborated with on another project. Findings Let's return to some of the questions that the artwork originally posed for SBG. What should be considered ahead of a work being commissioned? In order to give works the best chance of future showings or permanent display, from the start of the commissioning process you need to know where it's going and have resources in place to make this transition. Partnership agreements, liabilities and ownership need to be clear and agreed on before production commences. Maintenance requirements should be estimated this early stage and made available to all stakeholders. It is important to consider the return on investment in art at cultural events. If you spend money on an artwork for a cultural event, an investment should last longer than the event itself. How do we extend the life of a commissioned artwork? 
A benefactor or private custodian can't be expected to save and maintain an artwork like in the case of Floating Head. There are differing opinions between stakeholders in such projects as to where the ideal location for a work will end up. Art organisations and curators see museum collections as the ideal scenario, whereas private owners and trustees may have a different view. We reflected our reservations about public funds being used to conserve a privately owned artwork. Ultimately, we concluded that this is a long-standing tension within cultural funding, which sometimes just had to be accepted in order for a project to be realised. Barriers like permissions and liability are challenging, but can be overcome to an extent as with Floating Head. However, sharing knowledge between projects would be a way to demystify the permissions process and share a legacy of experience. The interest in this work is proof of the impact and legacy of Glasgow Garden Festival and similar events. It demonstrates that projects can harness nostalgia to communicate legacy and longevity in a critical way. As the floating head progressed, we had to let go of the idea of permanency being the only outcome. Having a temporary display of this work achieved many of the same aims. Did the Garden Festival have any exemplary models that could be replicated? Glasgow Garden Festival was not designed to consider the longer term artwork life cycle. The use of art within this regeneration project didn't result in good legacy outcomes for some of the artworks. It's more economically and environmentally sustainable to centre projects around existing artworks rather than always creating brand new ones. This work can still be critically and visually interesting.